demonstrate I wanted to imitate our team and not show up on time. So that's what I did. Wow. That's the first. I'm up there with Coach Killen and, you know, talking to former players at the reunion, and one of your interns comes up and says, Tom Eyes is looking for you to do the press um, after game press conference. So space Ellen. cadet, space Ellen. cadet. I was having a good time up there. Luckily, I was only drinking Diet Dews. Um, man, the game's been so long ago, I don't remember it. Um, the, the, obviously, the tale of two halves, they're, um, they're, just, they're, they're really hard to guard when they're shooting the ball th from the four and the five. And I, I'm, you know, I wasn't happy with our energy level. Um, it's really difficult for us to play DePaul with two true bigs on the floor. In the second half, I don't think we had two bigs on the floor um, in the traditional sense, and that helped us defend uh, multiple ball screens better. Uh, the coverage of pick and pop, um, three-point shooters, whether it's Tommy Hamilton, Forrest Robinson, um, you know, even Mike Henry. Stimmage is also a guy that can, that can shoot it. And so they have the ability to stretch you at five positions. And so and, and we, we tried to make that adjustment. Thought offensively we played fine the entire game. You know, obviously what hurt uh, DePaul was our ability to uh, establish Matt in the post. And, and when they doubled, he found the right guy. And then, you know, we had some guys really play well offensively. Miles Davis, Trayvon Blewett, D. Davis going eight assists, no turnovers. I mean, we just, uh, I thought the, the way we shared the ball and, and came up with uh, whatever the assist, 16 to five or something like that, assist turnover. Um, that's as good as we passed the ball a year. You talked yesterday about Trayvon being important <coughs> points wise. It seemed like he really forced the issue inside and settled for a lot of jumpers. Is, is that any kind of conversation you had with him about trying to get better shots? Um, you know, again, I think you're always a function of, of, of who you're playing with. And, and, and again, I thought our whole team, you know, moved the ball really, really well. Um, you know, we, we may have to settle into more of a four out one in team uh, than two traditional bigs. It's just, uh, it's tough going inside when you have Matt and Jalen and James. Those guys just, uh, they're, they're good players, especially when you play teams that, that stretch you on the other end. But uh, I know I'm being a little circular with the question. I just thought Trayvon played with a lot more confidence than he's played over the last uh, few weeks. He's done a really good job in practice these last four or five days. He has to continue, continue to do that. Uh, he's got to keep his weight down. And, um, you know, he played extremely well offensively um, and was really, really, I thought, confident today uh, for really the first time in a while. After the, the loss Thursday at Providence and, you know, struggles on the road and giving up 50 points in the first half, did you have to rally the team much at halftime or were they just kind of fed up and done with being on the losing end? Uh, I, I don't know. You know, you, you say your piece as a coach. Um, you try to make the adjustments that you feel are necessary to win the game. But if, if you don't make those adjustments as a player with energy and effort um, and just an unwillingness to let things happen like they did in the first half, then it really doesn't matter schematically. You know, in, in the first half, we played man. We played 2-3. We played 1-3-1. One, one, uh, and they served us any way you wanted. In the second half, you know, we probably played primarily man-to-man 99% -man of the time, 95% of the time. And um, the difference was night and day. Now, again, we, we had less bigs on the floor in the second half. Probably made it a little bit easier for us defensively because we could switch some more things. When you're shooting like that in the first half, how do you keep your guys from not getting discouraged and just kind of falling into that trap and saying, you know, it's not our day? Um, well, I, I think if you fall into the trap of being discouraged, then it's like you're playing defense hoping that they'll miss rather than making them miss. And that's, that's sometimes our team's problem is we, we just sort of play defense hoping the other team misses. Really, really good defensive teams, they force the other the, the opponent to miss. And we didn't do that in the first half. Um, you know, if you're saying on a couple of those open threes, man, they, they, they shouldn't fall, then you're not really playing defense. You're falling into that hoping they miss category. In the second half, uh, we play with a lot more energy. They got less looks. Uh, their, their looks were a little bit more rushed, and it was because of the effort that we, that we um, that we gave in the second half versus the first half. Because I don't, I don't really care if they hang their head or what, what they do, because the bottom line is you can't feel sorry for yourself if you're, if you're the one putting yourself in that predicament. The 
25 points per mile, that obviously stands out, but the eight rebounds as well. How big is that when he's able to do that? Or can you get that kind of production from any of your guards? It's huge. We talk about it all the time because this team's guards haven't been rebounders in high school. It's just not in their nature. They don't block out or they haven't been instructed to block out until they, they got to Xavier. Uh, they're guarding small forwards. You know, at times we play Miles the three. He's going to guard, um, you know, guys like Crockett that are terrific athletes, strong kids, offensive rebounders. And we've got to get better at that. And so it's not so much the total that a, that a guard gets. It's the ability to not let his man get it. You know, it's no, no shame in you not getting a defensive rebound, but you can't let your, you know, your, your matchup get it. And that's, what, that's been our issue. Today, with, with DePaul shooting 32 threes, a lot of those rebounds aren't going to be right around the basket. They're going to be spray outs to the free throw line. They're going to be spray outs to the short corner. And I thought our guards did a really good job of hunting them down when they finally missed in the second half. And, you know, Miles, rebounding, defense, uh, offense, it's crazy. If you told me they had 25 and 8, and he'd go one for six from the three-point line a year ago. I don't think anybody in the country would believe that. I mean, he's just playing with a ton of confidence. I mean, he scores 25 points and only makes one three. Um, he had a heck of a game. That's the best game in his Xavier uniform by far. Well, it seemed like last game, uh, they, they were able to take Matt out of the game just by double teaming him, him catching a little too far away. Today, not only did he score in the post, but he also found a lot of cutters. Was, right. Was that an adjustment with how you were playing that yeah. double team or with more chemistry or what was it? Again, I think you know, for three halves that we've played to Paul, we've been more of a three-out, two-in team. So you got Jalen and Matt, you got you know James and Jalen, you got Matt and and Jalen, and it's just a little bit more difficult when he gets post-trapped because the other big is going to be sitting on the block and that the lane's a little bit more crowded because we went to four perimeter players surrounding Matt and Jalen at times. When the ball went in, their trap is coming from further away. When the trap comes from further away, it's easy to process for Matt and. Whoever was trapping, we had that player dive, so we know he's open. And if they collapse on that, Matt's going to find the right guy. And so uh, we, tried to, we tried to feed the post from the top for Matt to score. And when it got to the wings and went in, that's when we knew they would trap. And, and, uh, and he, did a, he did a great job. I mean, big guy, have six assists, no turnovers, be able to score when it stays one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, we're going we're to do more of that with Matt. He's, uh, he's really good down there. That, that's a bigger issue, getting to the free throw line, you know, because Billy is a very, very willing passer. Um, he, he makes his team go. He's, he's really good on ball screens. He's got such good size that when you have smaller guards on him, he just fires passes over the top. And so we really worried about him getting in the lane. Uh, and I thought both our bigs and guards did a, did a pretty daggone good job uh, of limiting that. It just, again, uh, he makes the right play. That's why they got a lot of threes in the first half because he may not have had the assist, but he had the, the, the assist that got us in rotation. From an emotional and mental standpoint, is it almost better to win like this than to come out here and just put it on these guys? <sighs> from an emotional standpoint for me? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but from, you know, you know when, when you drop a game, you know, whether it's road, whether it's home, it steals your confidence as a team in one another, and it's just – Again, when you play in a conference like ours, you have to be resilient. You have to be able to bounce back, and that's not easy to do. DePaul comes in to our game with a ton of confidence. What do they have to lose? They went to Seton Hall. They won. They're sitting at 5-2. and two, They're shooting the ball well. And, you know, we, we, you doubt yourself a little bit, not as a coach, but as, as a team. Can our team do this? Does it, you know, uh, are we doing the right things? You know, what, what's, what's our issue? Um, because our guys really, really, really care. We all want to win. That's what we're in this for. But we're playing a terrific schedule in the league, and we have to be able to bounce back. And so uh, I was proud of our guys' character to be able to do that in the second half. Thanks. Uh, what's that? Uh, no Snickers. No, uh -uh, I'm good. <laughs>